listening to the Not So Late Show with Greg Gerard, the No Pants Talk Show, where the executive director of the 2021 Beloit International Film Festival chats with the realest MVPs. Tonight, Greg's checking in with the filmmakers of Behind the Strings, Beloit Filmworks president Nancy Clark Mather, and Indochina Productions founder Nicholas Simon. Strap in for the next 30 minutes of wonder and amazement. Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Gerard. Hey, Biff Nation, Greg Gerard here, Executive Director of Biff. We are rolling along with our 2021 festival. Things are going great here in Beloit and all over the world. And uh, we're so glad that you joined us here tonight. Uh, we've got, we've been having great luck with our, uh, I should really knock on wood for that. Um, we've, been, we've been having some great conversations online, virtually, really enjoying all of the, being able to bring all these filmmakers together in our little virtual world. And uh, we're, we're, we're gonna be doing this little program for another couple of nights right here, keeping our, the weeknights uh, you know, going steady, getting that message out there. Biff is happening right now. You can watch Biff Films right after you get done watching this segment. We've got some, and I, I'm gonna stop babbling because we don't have a whole lot of time for this show. And we've got uh, a whole group of guests here from a wonderful film uh most of these guys i saw last late last year and uh we had a wonderful conversation for about an hour and tonight we've only got about 15 or 20 minutes so uh without further ado i want to welcome the whole group from the the incredible film behind the strings documentary uh there they are michael Peroff, the producer hal rifkin the director and the brothers uh Han Gong Lee and Wei Gong Lee uh, from different parts of the world, I guess. We're all in different parts of the world. Uh, wait, you, who, three of you are in New Jersey. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Michael's in New Jersey, Hal's in New Jersey, and who else? I'm I think uh, Wei Gong is still in, in China. <laughs> yes. Wei, Wei Gong is still in China. Okay. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, so so happy to have you back here again. And Hong Gong, welcome. You were not able to join us for our, our last get together, but uh, we had a wonderful time and uh, we learned a whole lot. Uh, and I'm anxious to uh, give you all a chance to share your stories with our Biff audience tonight. So uh, welcome, welcome to Beloit, Beloit, Wisconsin. Um, I think I'd just like to get things started by um, asking Michael if you could just give us a quick overview of how this whole ensemble came together. That's you and Hal and the quartet. How did that, how did that magic uh, occur? Uh, well, uh, it started about six years ago, I might uh, start there. And uh, we're now, in, we're out of post-production and we're now distribution and film festival. So it's gone a while. But it all started with, um, I guess it's two parts. One is uh, I had worked in China. I co-founded a television production company and we did films uh, for prime time uh, on most of the major stations and China Central TV. So I had that as a background. But years later, I met uh, Hong Gong um, uh, just uh, socially. Our wives were friends and uh, he lived around the corner. And um, yeah. uh, one of the interesting things was that uh, his wife said to my wife, uh, well, since Michael has a background in China, we got it. Four of us have to get together, but it's going to take a while because my husband is always traveling. He, you know, he has a full time job teaching uh, at a music uh, conservatory and then he performs and teaches all over the world. So it took about a year and a half till we could line up. And, uh, and, and the idea of a documentary wasn't in place yet. But as I got to know, <coughs> probably hung on and his brother Wagon and the other two members of the quartet and their stories. Um, I had an interest, I had a list of uh, documentary films I wanted to do, but this kind of morphed and went right to the head of the list. And, um, uh, and then Hal, about, Hal and I met about the same time he was finishing up a documentary film uh, of an artist from India who lives in, near us. And uh, she invited me to a screening of her film and I met Hal and I told him my idea. And, so we partnered and uh, we pitched the idea to uh, Wei on Hong Kong as well as their two colleagues. Two colleagues. And um, it seemed okay. Uh, I'll let them 
pick up the story when they want on that point. And, um, and essentially, I mean, these are extremely high level, talented classical musicians. Now, having said that, uh, well, our film, the way Hal and I envisioned it was, this was not gonna be a performance film, but be a performance center, but we wanted to track their lives. This 180 days of traveling all over the world and being away from home, uh, the different places that they perform at all over the world. We went to France, Mexico, uh, up and down the US, and then uh, we spent two weeks in China on tour with them. In the shirt, behind the scenes, uh, on taxis, on planes, in their homes, which was very generous of them to give us permission. And that's kind of how the film came together. And um, uh, they were very generous with their time uh, and giving us the access. We think we have access that probably has never happened uh, in a um, doc film. It's interesting because there was a film done about 33, four years ago about another quartet, uh, more uh, the senior. And, um, uh, and, and you know that kind of modeled our idea, but it, we wanted to do something different. And we think our film accomplished that. And uh, so that's enough on not enough for me. I'll let uh, everyone else chime in. Okay. Well, so we've we now we know how you came together. Um, how did Hal? Now Hal Rifkin, you have a background. You have a you have a Wisconsin connection. Is that right? Yes, I went to school in Madison, to both undergraduate and graduate school. So I know I know Beloit. I'm I'm from uh, Elgin, so I used to go through Beloit on the way to Madison. So. Uh, and did you? And did I know you, your your town through passing. Yeah, well, you you might not recognize it now because it's uh, it's changed quite a bit since probably I'm you were back back sure. through here. But um, did you? So so did you get some of your filmmaking uh, education when you were at UW Madison? Well, actually, I was uh, I was uh, um, in a PhD program in in the Department of uh, Special Education. And um, I asked my, my advisor if I could do a film rather than, um, this was actually for a master's degree before I went on to a PhD, but uh, he said, sure. And I, so I quickly went out and found somebody to mentor me and um, I'm basically self-taught. It started in Madison and uh, I, I soon qu changed careers from, um, from psychology and uh, special education to filmmaking. Well, it looks like it was a, 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 a smart and smooth transition. Um, and uh, you, you've obviously developed a love for the craft and uh, it shows in your work. Um, and uh, I guess, and your work of course, was chasing these other two, these other these guys and their friends around with a camera all over uh, hell and tarnation, right? We were, we were a fly on the wall for five years and uh, we didn't think, uh, it was going to take that long, but uh, it, it ended up taking five years. And uh, but it was a pleasure. It was a they were all gentlemen. They they uh, pretty much ignored us after a certain period, which is what we wanted. And uh, so we just <laughs> we just hung around them and uh, filmed. And uh, after 150 hours of uh, filming, we had a lot of material to work with. Yeah, uh, I guess. Um it makes me think of the fact that the, the, the when you guys talked with me the last time, the film was right around 60 minutes total running time. And uh, between then and the festival, you guys managed to uh, sort of retool the film a little bit and uh, add a few, add some of that stuff from the cutting room floor back into the film. And, and I just, I, I think you did a wonderful job. Um, Hal, was that, did you have a hand in that? Handy work, or did you guys hand that off to some magician editor person? Well, that was uh, our editor is Tracy Kring, who who was brilliant and and worked with Michael and me, and really it was a, a teamwork. The three of us uh, uh, went back and forth, and Tracy would do a cut, then uh, Michael and I would uh, go at it, and uh, it, it evolved through that kind of uh, uh, back and forth collaboration. Yeah, I, I felt like Michael and I had talked about the fact that, uh, you know, he was wondering at some point, at one point, do you think we could stand a little more time? And I was like, yeah, I felt like from the original version to what we're seeing now at the festival, I enjoyed the, the subtle additions for sure, but I just felt that it made the human interest part of it just a little bit bigger 
And, um, and I know our audience enjoys that, that type of thing. And, uh, uh, I, I think it was, a I think it's a, I think it's a better cut now. That's my, in my humble opinion, <laughs> if I could say that, but, um, fantastic. And, you know, it's, it's really, uh, you guys, uh, Hong Gong and, and Wei Gong, uh, you're the ones that have to be uh, on the other side of the lens and, uh, and performing, doing what you do with the, the pressure of the cameras being on you all the time. Uh, uh, what was the experience like for you as this whole, uh, you know, this, this journey took place with you uh, being the subject of a documentary film, how how did how did that work for you guys? Well, the, uh, for the most part, we were pretty preoccupied with our own thing, rehearsing, traveling, so we were not really paying attention on the camera. <laughs> Actually, not at all. Yeah. You said you uh, shot about one hundred fifty hours. That's amazing. And I think after about 15 hours, I just try to ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I just... I think that's what Michael and, uh, and Hal wanted. So. Yeah, I suppose maybe that helped that there was that much time taken because I know for me, if the, as soon as I know that there's a record light on or there's, you know, somebody's rolling tape or taking a picture, I, you know, it, it, it affects me. So, uh, but after I like that after a after a time uh, you know a period of time, uh, it just becomes it's it's not even uh, it's not even in your, in your head anymore, you because you've got a lot to keep in your head as it is. I am just I'm just so in awe of the of uh, your virtuosity and the discipline and uh, you know the lifelong passionate commitment to this that it takes. I don't you know. Uh, uh, it's one thing to be in, an, for instance, in an orchestra, a larger group, but that quartet is, that's just the, that's the hardest job, right? That's the hardest. I mean, it's just the, it, the music is intense. The dynamic is intense. And um, so why don't you guys tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, I know we've seen it in the film, uh, but uh, your, your, your journey as brothers and as, you know, virtuoso musician brothers, uh, how what what has that been like and what are the pros and cons of that setting because family out on the road can be a delicate situation sometimes we uh you know, I, and my brother was there when i was born so he he was always in my life and he, <laughs> i was always almost in his life except the first 20 months because he's 20 months older than me um, our pa both parents are violinists, and my uh, maternal grandfather was a violinist. Many uncles and aunties are violinists, so so we have about uh, maybe over a dozen violinists uh, in our family, and wow. almost ten were uh, professionals. So playing music was uh, very natural. And uh, I think by the time I was 14, maybe my brother was 15, 16, we knew we were going to be professionals too, like our parents. And then we started a quartet when Hong Kong was 20, I was 19. And we didn't know how long that was going, probably just three years to a competition in, in UK. And then we won a big second prize. It was a big deal in China. Then we uh, came to America. By that time, we knew we were going to try to make something out of this uh, group, four of us. And uh, we started in 1983. So now it's uh, next year we're preparing our 40, 40 years anniversary. So wow. Yeah. That's, that, that, is very, that is truly impressive. Hong Kong, you, in the midst of all of this, uh, as, as was mentioned in the film, had to deal with uh, ch changing instruments, correct? Yeah. Well, uh, I know. I'm sure everybody asks you about this, but I, you know, I'd like to hear, you know, from you what what you know what was that like, and how daunting was that, um, or was it just a snap? No, it was not a snap because <laughs> I didn't play the viola. Uh, I never actually touched the viola uh, before I uh, uh, before that year that we lost our violist. 
he met a lady uh, on tour in Germany and decided to move to Germany. And uh, and he was uh, started a quartet with us. And he was a uh, you know old childhood friend. That was a uh, kind of a big blow uh, back then in 1994. And then we auditioned a bunch of uh, really high qualified people, but none of them we felt as comfortable as the old violist. So just happens I had a viola in my house and a student's viola. Uh, my student also had an extra viola, so I, I tried. So I I decided I, I like the viola song. And since my uncle, my grandfather, my cousin, they, they, there are like uh, five, four or five people in our family play the viola. I said, why not uh, give it a try? So, well, yeah. that's, so that's, that's, that's quite impressive. For, he practiced for about maybe two weeks and then the cellist. Uh, actually, well, like three. five weeks. Uh, I practiced really hard at that oh, because we oh, had five weeks. a recording session scheduled in five weeks. So I said, okay, I, I give no, it a no, try. I meant, I meant the first time we read together. Oh yeah, I, I tried uh, two weeks. I don't uh, so we read uh, some read pieces said, together. Hong Kong, you already sounded so much better than everyone else we auditioned. Well, it's just it, the, what what you the music that you make is just uh, so remarkable. And uh, I I uh, let me let me ask you this: I the the other the other two members of the quartet. Uh, what is their status right now? And uh, I guess with COVID still raging uh, in parts of the world, will you guys be gathering for uh, live concerts anytime soon? Do you have, is that anywhere on the horizon? But the, there are a few uh, long, online concerts scheduled and uh, we did uh, uh, a few online concerts, but we actually did play one uh, big formal concert in Tianjin, uh, Juilliard, uh, the new Juilliard school uh, that uh, it's opened uh, last fall in Tianjin, China. Mm. That's where I am now. Oh, you are? Okay. And uh, now you guys spent, either both of you or one of you spent a little time not just, just south of us here at uh, Northern Illinois University, correct? Yeah, Both that's uh, us, we studied there um, from 1985 to 87. With uh, Shmuel Ashkenazi? Shmuel Ashkenazi and the Vermeer Quartet. Yeah, they were our mentor and it was great. It was. Uh, would, would you say I that to took. If I do it again, I would do the same thing. So it, it kind of uh, changed you as musicians, the time you spent with Shmuel? I yeah, mean, he was, he, he is uh, just uh, one of the greatest violinists and greatest musicians of our time. And uh, we are very good friends now, but he, he changed the, he actually was the first one taught us to really uh, play the instruments and play the quartet after we left China. Uh, so speaking of China, has the, the last time I talked to you guys, this movie had not been played in China yet. Any, any guys, uh, uh, um, Michael and, and Hal, have you guys learned anything about uh, the potential for the film to play in China? Uh, there, there is potential. Uh, we had some preliminary discussions with te several potential distributors. Um, we haven't really pushed for that yet. Um, and... Um, uh, it's still, it's still, a, it's still a consideration. Um, and we were actually invited to perform, uh, to show the film, uh, in Hong Kong about a year, I guess it's exactly a year ago, uh, with when the quartet was going to be performing in Shanghai, but COVID wiped that out. Uh, um, yeah. uh, they didn't go to the performance, uh, although in the U S it's interesting because it was, it was like in February, <clears throat> the last time they performed in the U S was at Carnegie Hall, I think the second weekend in March. And like That's three or four days later, yeah. everything closed. So, Well, uh, I'm, I'm really, this is so 
troubling for me because, uh, like I said, the last time we had a lot of time to talk, and unfortunately tonight we don't. We're just about out of time with you guys. But I wanted to find out if, uh, uh, if uh, Michael, is there anything on the uh, uh, on the movie making front for you for Hal? Uh, In terms of a new a uh, new pro new projects, a new project. Yeah, well, Hal's actually. I, mean, I think. He's, are you done with the new project? How's that another project that? No, we're. In, I, I'm in pre-production on a, a project that's going to take uh, a crew to uh, Guatemala and and Bolivia. It's going to be on in indigenous political rights. So that's going to be late fall, early spring in production, and then um, uh, post production in 2021. And Michael, you're just going to keep you're going to stay out there on the road and make sure that these guys that you keep steering their career in the right direction. Is that right? They have a manager that, that <laughs> far better than I could ever do it. Uh, but you know, it's interesting. We stopped filming uh, February of 2019, uh, which was actually an extension. Uh, but since then, you know, uh, we would have loved to have kept you know filming, but you know, we had to cut it. We wanted to get it out. My time right now is very focused on distribution and um, looking at alternate distribution models since film distribution is so up in the air. Uh, I, I have some ideas for some several other documentary films, but uh, until I get this baby all the way through, it's into the distribution bay that uh, you know we're comfortable with. Uh, I'm not going to start another project, so that's kind of where I'm at with it. But I love to do another one. <laughs> Well, I just on behalf of Biff, I just want to say thank you to all of you guys. Uh, best wishes to you and your your families, your loved ones through this these these dark times that we've been in. Uh, may there be light in our futures, and may there be opportunities for us to see you gentlemen play your instruments uh, here in the states again, uh, a concert nearby that we can attend. And uh, good luck out there on the road. Uh, when it opens up. And uh, like I said, my best wishes to you. And uh, we just love your film here in Beloit. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Behind the strings, Thank everybody. You. Yeah. Thank you. Bravo. Bravo, gentlemen. Bravo. Well, God.